Welcome CCV, we're so glad to be together with you today. Wherever you are, we want to invite you to sing as we worship together. Let's sing this out. I've been sinking in shame, shadows surrounding me, running was all I knew, but mercy led me to you.
Hey girl, let me start by saying that things are about to get real. By real, I mean real weird. Right now, it doesn't seem like a big deal. You're still showering on a semi-regular basis. You're dropping into Target to pick up a few things just because you had some time to kill while the kids were at school. You're still using toilet paper instead of old t-shirt sleeves. Well, that's all about to end. Remember when your friend joked that you two should homeschool your kids together and you just laughed and laughed? Buckle up, Buttercup, because you're about to cry in the shower because you had to explain third grade math. Speaking of the shower, your hygiene is about to take a nosedive. No judgment after all, because I'm you. But I need to remind you that accidentally spilling a juice box on yourself doesn't count as bathing. But don't worry, you're gonna come out of this so much wiser. I know that right now, you hold the belief that if you could wear yoga pants every day, all your stress would melt away. But trust me, I've tried it. And somehow it just makes things worse. Spandex is comfortable on day three, but it feels like surrender on day 27. But now you know, see? Wiser. Over the next few weeks, you're gonna hear lots of jokes about all the babies that will be born nine months from now. But you and I both know that having our three beautiful children around all the time, every day, forever and always, is the best birth control on the market. Your once precious date night look more like finding old Easter candy in the couch and then hiding together in the garage until your children inevitably find you. Netflix and chill? Oh yeah, that is now Tiger King and fall asleep. Getting ready for the day now means a pit check and spring for breeze on last week's bra. On day 48, you're going to want to cut your own bangs. Please, please don't let that happen to us. We'll start to think, Maybe I can make my own bread or sew my own clothes. Slow your roll. This isn't Little House on the Prairie. Target's still open. But I don't want you to think it's all bad where you're headed. Let me ask you, when is the last time your whole family did a puzzle? You'll probably say never, right? Not to brag, but we've done four, even with our 13-year-old willingly helping. And your two kids that never seem to get along. They've built a fort in the backyard that only they're allowed in. Things are about to get really hard. But if you let them, they're about to get really, really good. You're probably gonna question whether you're doing anything right in this. But all the kids are gonna remember are the movie nights and the Sunday bars and the time you let them eat cereal for dinner. You don't have to know it's because you couldn't bring yourself to make one more meal. They'll just see a mom who was there when things got scary and never stopped finding ways to make them feel safe and loved. You're an amazing mom. You've got this. You've got this. You've got this. And you've got this. I love the perspective of that video. I mean, just so funny yet packed with so much truth. But this Mother's Day does look different. And it does, but that doesn't take away its significance. So as a church... We just want to say, happy Mother's Day. And to all the moms out there, we hope in this service you feel loved, you feel valued and honored. That said, I also want to acknowledge that this is, a, this is a tough Mother's Day for some of you. And that's because for the first time in maybe a long time, your kids aren't able to visit you or you're not able to visit your mom. No matter what you're going through, my prayer is that at some point in the service, God reminds you of how much he does love you, that he sees your situation and that he really does care. And I believe one of the ways God's going to do that is through the message today. Today, we have one of the most dynamic speakers to women in the entire country. Her name is Lisa Turkhurst. She's the president of Proverbs 31 Ministries. She's a New York Times bestselling author. But most importantly, Lisa's someone that God's speaking very powerfully through during this time. And part of that is because she speaks with so much authenticity and from a place of her, her own deep sense of pain and adversity. Lisa wanted to be here with us in Phoenix, but because of travel restrictions, she joins us from North Carolina. So let's all open our hearts to what God wants to speak to us today as we join Lisa right now. Hi. 
Hi, Christ Church of the Valley. I'm Lisa Turkers, and I so wish that we were gathering in person like originally planned today. I was so looking forward to being with the entire CCV family. But as you all know, we are getting creative and coming to you online. Second, I wanna tell you, happy Mother's Day. And whether you're a mom because you have children or whether you are a female influencer of other people, you know, really motherhood is influence and influence is something that I wanna talk about today because it's a heavy weight. So even if you don't have your own children, I know today's message will encourage you. But before we dive into the message, I also wanna say to all of you out there looking for wonderful ways to celebrate the significant woman in your life, whether that is your mom, your wife, your sister, your friend, whoever you're celebrating on this Mother's Day, I want to tell you a couple of things. Number one, ask her, what can I do to help you today? Number two, ask her, what can I do to make today really special? And number three, do what she says. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's jump right into the message. If you'll open up to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I'm turning to this story today that has been an extreme encouragement to me. Because whenever you are leading people, deep is your sorrow when you feel helpless and you don't know how to best lead people, especially through hard times. So this is a true leadership principle, but I would say it's even more true when you are a mom. I would say never have I known deep sorrow like when I feel helpless, when one of my kids is facing something and I so desperately wanna fix it, and I know that I can't fix it. So I wanna to turn to this passage of scripture that has been an extreme encouragement to me. To set it up, I wanna say it revolves around a king, an ancient king of Israel named King Jehoshaphat. Now, of course, when you hear that, you may think, what in the world am I going to have in common with an ancient king of Israel? I think you will find you have way more in common with King Jehoshaphat than you ever considered before. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 2, it says, Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you. Basically, what happens is three different countries have banded together and have joined forces to march against the much smaller country that Jehoshaphat is leading. And so in verse 3, we see the first three words of verse 3, alarmed Jehoshaphat resolved. And then verse 3 goes on to say, to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. So Judah is the smaller country that Jehoshaphat is leading. And he finds out that these three countries have banded together. They're marching against him. It is absolutely certain that without an extreme divine intervention, that they will be outnumbered that this battle will be lost, that many people will be killed or taken captive, and that this is a losing fight. And so it's no wonder in verse three that we see Jehoshaphat, and the first word is alarmed, because he was absolutely alarmed. You know, when things are coming at us, maybe you didn't wake up today and you have a vast army coming against you, but maybe worry is assaulting you. Maybe anxiety is threatening to consume you. Maybe fear or fear of the unknown is starting to nip away and eat away at the peace that you just recently had, but you're not feeling it right now. All of these things, it's just like armies coming against us. So it's no wonder that we would feel alarm because that is a very natural feeling when things are coming against us. But I want you to look at Jehoshaph Jehoshaphat's name. It's bookended in two realities. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved. 
That word resolved on the other side of his name. That means he's already pre-decided what to do when things come against him. He already had a pattern in his life of turning to God in the small ways so that when the big things came at him, he just followed the natural pattern, the rhythm he'd already established in his life of turning to the Lord. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved, I want this to be true of me. I want this to be true in my motherhood journey. Alarmed, Lisa resolved. In other words, I'm going to have lots of feelings during this great responsibility of raising kids, but feelings should be an indicator, not a dictator in my life. In other words, feelings should indicate there's something to address, there's something to do, but feelings shouldn't dictate how I act and react. I can't tell you how many times in my motherhood journey I have reminded myself, Lisa, just smile and listen to whatever your child is saying. All the while, what's really running through like a ticker tape in my mind is, Lisa, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. Because I think when you feel the weight of responsibility of helping shepherd an entire life wrapped up in this little person that you feel like is your heart. I've heard it said, having a child is like having part of your heart walking around outside of your ability to help it completely or even control it when hard things happen. And I know that feeling. I have five children, um, but I didn't start out as a woman who thought she would have five children. We had three biological little girls, and then my husband and I met these two beautiful boys from Africa. They were part of a touring choir, the Liberian Children's Acapella Choir. And we went to this concert uh, to hear the Liberian Boys Acapella Choir just as a special field trip because one of my daughters happened to be studying the country of Liberia. Now, I will say, being the very, very intelligent mom that I am, before the concert, I instructed my kids, hey, let's pull out a world map and let's find Liberia. Because it ends in Ia, I'm pretty sure it's a country in South America, so let's look for it. And then my oldest daughter pointed out, mom, it's not in South America, it's actually a country on the west coast of Africa. And I said, of course, I was just making sure you guys were paying attention. And so we went to this choir, not even really knowing a lot about Liberia. But as I sat there in that concert that night and I listened to the boys' music, it captured my heart. It arrested something in my soul. And I'd been praying this prayer every day. God, I want to see you. God, I want to hear you. God, I want to know you. And before my feet even hit the floor today, God, I say yes to you. I'd been praying that prayer, and my husband had been praying that prayer for about a year before that concert. And as I listened to the boys singing, and then the coordinator got up after the concert and shared with us a little bit more about the boys' story, I found out that their orphanage, while they were here touring to raise money and raise awareness to help feed the orphans back home, their orphanage in Liberia had been attacked by rebels. Liberia was a war-torn country at that time. And each of these boys, they were in a desperate situation. And all of a sudden, God started to move in my heart and said, Lisa, two of those boys are yours. So I did the very spiritual thing. I put my fingers in my ears and I was like, la, 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 I'm not listening to you, God. I mean, I can look around this church right now and I can show you, see that mom over there? She doesn't skip pages when she reads books at night to her kids. And see that mom over there? She bathes her kids 
every single night. I'm more like once a week, if it's starting to get a little dicey around here, then we'll get a bath. And see that mom over there? She is so organized. She doesn't lose library books. She she actually has all of her kids dressed in clean outfits and they all have shoes on. Meanwhile, one of my kids couldn't find their shoes this morning. And as part of realistic discipline, we just put them in the car and said, you lost your shoe, you have to explain where your shoe is, but we're going to the concert. So I started telling God all the reasons why I was absolutely not qualified for this this assignment. But because I'd been praying that prayer, I knew I had already established a pattern in my life of saying yes to God. And, And I had invited the divine presence of God Almighty to reveal himself to me. God, I wanna see you. God, I wanna hear you. God, I wanna know you. And I say yes to you every single day. We were already participating in God's assignment before we even knew what this big assignment might be. Well, long story short, God moved in such an incredible way. After the concert that night, I walked up to the front and I told the coordinator, not that I'm interested at all, but if someone was interested in finding more information about these boys, how could they do that? And uh, he said, just walk over there and talk to the boys. And if you're supposed to get involved in their life, you'll know. God will make it so clear to you. So I took my little girl's hands and walked over and immediately two of the boys from the choir separated from the crowd. They walked straight up to me. They wrapped their arms around me and they called me mom. Then I had such a situation because my husband wasn't there for that part of it. So I got in the car and called him on his cell phone and I'm like, hey, Um, So, just so you know, two of the boys from the choir um, just called me mom, and immediately my husband said, where are you, and get home now. So I drove home, and we had this very wonderful conversation, um, just talking about what if, what if this could be part of God's assignment for our family. And I told my husband, I'm not expecting you to have an answer. This is such a a big decision, but maybe if you'll just commit to me that you'll pray about this and you'll spend a little time with the boys. And if you come to me, Art, and you say, we're not supposed to adopt these boys, then we will be done with it and that's that. Um, We'll find another way to help them. But if you say we're supposed to do this, I'll take your hand and we'll do it together. After several months of getting to know the boys and praying about it, Art came to me and said, we are supposed to adopt these boys. And I was, to say the least, thrilled, but at the same time, so very scared. I was the woman who only wanted one child, and now suddenly I was going to have five And then we had the boys tested to see what grade they need to be in because I was thinking, it's okay. You know, we'll be able to send all the kids off to school every day. So I'll regather my sanity while they're gone and then gear up for that dinner that night and it'll be just fine. But when the tests came back, it showed that these boys, ages 12 and 13, they needed to be in kindergarten and there was no kindergarten class that would take them. Alarmed, Lisa resolved. I didn't do it perfectly to resolve to inquire of the Lord. At first, I panicked, and then I told God all the reasons why I absolutely could not homeschool. And then I went in my closet, and I laid down in the fibers of the carpet in my closet, and I cried. But I remember that first day when all five kids were home, and it was too complicated to send our other girls to school. So we brought them all home and they all showed up at the kitchen table and they were all looking at me expecting an education. And I said, excuse me for just one minute. I went back in my closet. I cried some more. And then that's when God, God really started to stir in my heart. Trust me with this. Give this to me. All I expect from you, Lisa, is to bring a little bit of willingness. And if you will bring your little bit of willingness, I will take that and I will use it. 
You aren't alone in this, Lisa. Just come to me every day. And then you show up at that kitchen table, bringing your little bit of willingness, and I will meet you there. Well, I have to say, that's what I did. And I wasn't really sure that it would work. But every day, I would show up at the kitchen table. I would literally sit there while they were all just getting their papers and pencils and their books. And I would literally sit there at the kitchen table, lifting up my little bit of willingness to God. And I reminded God, God, you promised to meet me here. I can only do what I can do in the natural, but God, you can bring the supernatural. And that's what I need. I can't say I ever became a terrific homeschool mom. I, I don't think that I really did. As a matter of fact, I remember one day we were doing flashcards, and I'm so sorry if you are the inventor of flashcards, but I think they're from the devil. And I was so frustrated. I was just about to rip my hair out. And finally, I just said, okay, everybody, get in the van. We are gonna drive around town. I want you to add up the numbers on the speed limit signs, and I want you to multiply the numbers on the speed limit signs. That's math, people. That is all I've got, okay? But somehow, even in the messy imperfections of that season of life, after two years, we had our boys tested again, and they could get into middle school. And I don't think at all it was because I brought stellar teacher skills or an incredible supernatural ability in myself. No, I just showed up with my willingness, and God really showed up too, and He helped me. And that's what he's doing for Jehoshaphat here. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And then it says that he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. And it says then in verse 5, when Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the courtyard, he starts praying to the Lord. And I want you to pay especially close attention to verse 12. Halfway through verse 12, he says, For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. When we're facing all that we're facing right now, when we're carrying the tremendous responsibility to be moms, or if you're a leader, to be a leader, you're going to hit points where you do not know what to do. And it is okay to just simply say, I feel like I have no power to face this vast thing that is attacking us. I do not know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Prayers to God release the power of God and the assurance of God that settles our heart. Let's keep reading the story. It then says, then all of the men in verse 13, all of the men of Judah with their wives and their children and their little ones, they stood there before the Lord. Verse 14, and the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men in the assembly. And that man in verse 15 stands up and says, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Moms, I want to assure you right now, when your kids go through struggles, that your child this struggle, it's not the enemy. We have an enemy, but it's not your child and it's not you. And there will be times that you have no idea what to do. But as you keep your eyes on the Lord, you can be reminded that there is a battle going on, but you don't have to carry the weight of the whole battle. Your job is to be obedient to God. Do the, exactly what God has instructed you to do, what's right in front of you. Do that and then release the rest to the Lord. I've often said my job is to be obedient to God, 
God's job is everything else. And when your child makes a mistake, I want to encourage you, don't draw a straight line from your child's mistake to some sort of weakness or insecurity that you have as a mom. I've done that, and it is so defeating. And I think the enemy uses what we feel like are our weaknesses against us, especially when our child makes a mistake. So don't draw a line from your child's mistake to some sort of weakness that you think you have as a mom. Remember, God himself assigned this child to you for such a time as this, because God saw not weaknesses in you, but God saw a strength in you as a mom that he knew that child would need. So when your child goes through a struggle or makes a mistake, I want you to draw a straight line from that child's mistake to some sort of strength that you have as a mom. Utilize that. Bring that to the forefront. Thank God for this strength. And then draw on that strength with God's strength, and it will be good. Your job is to be obedient to God. God's job is everything else. Well, throughout the journey of my kids going to school, there were many ups and downs. And by the time my son Jackson was 21 years old, he was ready to graduate. But when he brought me his final transcript, he was concerned. We were applying for colleges, and he said, Mom, I did my very best but I only have a 2.79 grade point average. And according to the requirements of this college I'm trying to get into, they don't take students with a 2.79 grade point average. And I said, Jackson, do you mean to tell me that the God of the universe saw you as a forgotten orphan in a forgotten country in the middle of a forgotten orphanage And that the God of the universe somehow rescued you from that, worked all the details that had to be worked out to get you to America, to become part of a singing, touring choir, to get you to that church on the very night that your dad and I happened to be there, and and that he moved in our hearts to adopt you, and, and, and he provided me with enough sanity to homeschool you for two years, and then he provided a great celebration after two years that when that school bus pulled up to the front of our house, and I looked at you and said, shimmy, shimmy, and you went and got on that school bus and you started going to school and you have made it all the way to your senior year. Do you really think the same God who did all of that is going to be hindered by your 2.79 grade point average? I mean, son, if you did your best and your best equals a 2.79 grade point average, I somehow think the God of the universe is going to use that to get you exactly where you need to go, whether it is this college or another plan. I think sometimes it's important when we're facing things that in our human rationale, we can't figure out, just like this situation that I was facing with my son Jackson, that we remember to go back and trace God's hand of faithfulness. Remember what he did here and here and here and help teach our kids. Remember to trace God's hand of faithfulness. Our God is faithful. Our God is trustworthy. Our God is true. Well, shortly after that, we got a letter in the mail and I was so confused. It was an invitation to the High Awards Honor Ceremony. And I was thinking to myself, wow, like, unless it was a really bad year for the honor students, typically kids with a 2.79 grade point average don't get invited to participate in the high award honor ceremony. But Jackson got an invitation and he wanted me to go with him. And so, plus there was this really awesome restaurant catering the breakfast. And so I said, Jackson, let's go. At least we'll get a good breakfast out of it. So we went and we sat in the back and we watched all of these well deserving kids get all of these amazing awards, the high honor in chemistry, the high honor in history and languages and math. And we got all the way through the ceremony and Jackson's name wasn't called. But when the principal got up to do his closing remarks, 
He said, we have one last award that we want to give. It's called the Administrator's Excelsior Award. And typically, we would give it to a student who has achieved something academically that is special and rare. And this year, we decided to do something a little different because there is a student among us who really has accomplished something amazing, special, and rare, even though his grade point average is not usually what it would be for the recipient of this award. But this student has demonstrated extreme courage in the midst of great adversity. Jackson Turkhurst, you are this year's Administrator's Excelsior recipient. And as I watched my son walk forward to get that award, I had so many emotions. I was thinking, wow, God, thank you. And then the second thing I thought is, somebody better give me an award too. Do you people know what I had to do to help this son of mine get to this place? But I had spent a little bit of time with Jesus that morning, so I reined all of that in, and I watched him walk forward and receive that award. And we took that award, and with his transcript, made a copy of it, and I wrote a letter explaining what a hardworking young man my son is, that in seven years, he got from kindergarten to being a graduate of high school. He got into that very college that he wanted to get into. Our job is just to be obedient to God. God's job is everything else. Well, back to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, after the man stands up in the assembly and reminds King Jehoshaphat and all of the people, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Jehoshaphat, in verse 18, bows down with his face to the ground. And then when he gets back up, it says in verse 21, after consulting with the people, Jehoshaphat finally knows his battle strategy. He is going to send the worship leaders at the head of the army to sing praises to God. That's his battle strategy. And when I read this, I think that probably wouldn't be my battle strategy. I would probably go recruit the people with the biggest muscles and the fiercest weapons to be my front line of attack. But King Jehoshaphat knew when you release prayers and praises to God, you release the power of God. So he sent out at the head of his army, a band of men singing. We find the song in verse 21, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Verse 22, and as they begin to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes in the hearts of the men in those three armies that had banded together and were marching against Jehoshaphat. And they started fighting amongst each other. So that by the time Jehoshaphat and his men crested the hill to look at this vast army they were so afraid of. There wasn't one man in the opposing army left. They had all been killed. And King Jehoshaphat and his army hadn't even lifted a weapon. It was their praises of God and their prayers to God that released the absolute power of God and they walked in that, and that can be true of you as well. Now let's look at how 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 29 and 30 end with Jehoshaphat's story. It says, the fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel, and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for God had given him rest on every side. That's what I want for you, my friend. Yes, we will have hardships. Yes, we will face things that make us afraid, that we don't know how to handle. Yes, there will be challenges, and yes, there will be struggles. But when we turn to the Lord and we truly know with great assurance 
that God is with us, we can stand before anything we face and we, we can look at it through the lens that my God is good. My God is good to me. He is good to my kids. He's good to my family. He is good even when circumstances are not good. My God is good. My God is good to me. And my God is good at being God. Therefore, I don't have to carry the weight of trying to control everything or trying to fix everything or trying to handle everything on my own. I can turn to the Lord and he will be so faithful. Motherhood, it's a million little moments that God weaves together with grace, redemption, laughter, tears, and most of all, love. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the truths that we have learned in the battle that King Jehoshaphat faced. Thank you for the example of your word. God, we want so desperately to see you. We want to hear you. We want to know you. We want to fall hard after you and say yes to you every single day. And so, God, we stand here today and we remind ourselves your job is to fight the ultimate battles. Our job is just to be obedient to you. And in that, we can have peace and rest for our soul. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. My guess is that so many of you can relate with that message, a message of how God can move even in the midst of our pain. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna pray a very specific prayer for you. And I wanna ask you to join in with it, that you wouldn't just hear this message. No, you'd actually do something with it. See, hearing doesn't change you. Remember, only acting on what you hear does. So I wanna pray very specifically that God tells you exactly what you need to do with this message, and then you would have the courage to do it. Would you pray that with me? God, we, we thank you for just using Lisa to speak into all of our lives today. And will we be reminded that God, you, you are moving in this season, even if it's a season of discouragement, even if it's a season of pain. And God, for all of us today, would you just show us what you want us to do with this, whether that's picking up the phone or sending an email or offering forgiveness or reconciling with someone we love in our lives. God, whatever it is, give us the courage to do it. And will we continue to see you move, not only in our church, but in our, our individual lives. That's what you're doing, God, during this season. And Thank you for all the moms today. Thank you for Mother's Day. Would they feel loved and encouraged? And as we continue to, to move on, God, prompt us on exactly what you wanna do in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, have a great Mother's Day. We'll see you back next week. And as we continue our series, Good Medicine, and hey, it's a great opportunity now to invite someone to join in with you online as we continue to see God take our pain and turn it into his great purposes. Have a great week, everybody.